Hi, this is Jen Lasser with Adobe Analytics Product Management. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the upcoming enhancements to our Fallout Visualization and Analysis Workspace that will be releasing on June 8th. Fallout, if you haven't used it before, is a customer journey visualization that shows you where visitors are having success or trouble with different points on your website or your app. Fallout will show you if visitors eventually pass through the touch points you specified and in the order that you specified them. Fallout differs from Flow in two ways. The first is that in Fallout, the visitor just needs to eventually pass through the touch points you've specified. They don't have to go directly from one step to the next like they do in Flow. The other difference is that Fallout allows you to specify the checkpoints, whereas Flow will tell you the different points that your, your visitor is passing through as they move through your website. I'll give a quick primer on, on uh, Fallout in just a moment. Um, but wanted to quickly highlight the enhancements that are coming. So the first enhancement is the ability to constrain touch points that you've specified to happen within the next hit of one another, as opposed to just eventually like the fallout analysis works today. Next, you'll be able to rename and more easily manage your touch point groups or steps within your fallout. You'll be able to add unlimited segments for comparison, as opposed to just three segments like you can today and you'll also be able to trend touch point percentages in addition to just trending the raw number of visitors that make it to each step like you can today. So let's hop into analysis workspace and I'll give a quick primer on using the follow-up visualization before I hit the enhancements and demo those for you. In analysis workspace you add the follow-up visualization by dragging over from the visualization rail the fallout option. Here you can drag and drop in different steps to build out a process. Fallout is typically conducted across a key conversion process on your website, such as a checkout funnel or a registration flow or maybe an application process. So let's say you have a shopping cart and you want to specify that as your fallout. I'm going to go to shopping cart pages and pull these over individually to create the funnel that I want to analyze. Within Fallout and Analysis Workspace, one of the advantages is of, over our other products is that you can mix and match dimensions with events. So let's say the last step in your, your funnel here is actually the order confirmation page, but you accidentally forgot to tag it. Instead, you have a, the orders event available to you um, in place of the missing page name. So you can actually drag over the order event and have that complete your funnel. Another thing I want to highlight about the existing fallout is the ability to look at fallout within a session or cross session. So we default to cross session, which we call visitor level. This says that these steps have to happen for a visitor in this order, but they don't necessarily have to happen within the same visit. You can also change this to be a bit more constrained and look at these steps within the visit. So these have to happen within the same session um, that, your, that your visitor is on your website. So we'll default to visitor, um, but you do have this option here. So let me highlight some of the enhancements that are coming. The first one that I want to highlight is the difference between eventual path and the new option of within the next hit. So as I mentioned before, Fallout has always been the ability to look at the movement of your visitors through steps and they eventually have to pass through each of these touch points that you've specified. Now you'll be able to change eventual, which will be the default setting, to within the next hit. This will constrain your funnel even further, telling us that visitors must go from cart details, for example, directly to shipping information. They can't detour in between like they can with eventual path. This is a setting that you can change between each step in your funnel, so you can uniquely set it depending on, on what level of information you're looking for. So while that change didn't do very much, if I change the, the different step here between shipping and billing, you'll notice that the funnel zeroes out. This tells me that there are no visitors that go directly from shipping information to billing information. They only eventually go there. So you can take this analysis a step further and explore what pages people are going to in between shipping and billing. 
how can you make that process a bit cleaner and easier and keep them within the funnel and, and get them to move between those steps more directly. And you can easily do this with an existing feature in Fallout, which is break down, fall through, and fall out at this touch point. We will, uh, choosing one of these options, we will automatically generate a list of pages for you that will tell you where people are going after shipping information. The next thing that I want to highlight is the ability to rename steps within your fallout. So let's say that you wanted to add a uh, step here or touch point for your product pages. I'm just going to grab a bunch of them, drag it over, put it as one of the top level steps before people get to the shopping cart. Now today the page name will look something like this. It's a big or statement that you can't really make heads or tails of. Moving forward you'll be able to double click on the name and rename this to be something a lot more concise. So now when you look at your fallout, you can see the second step is a lot more readable. And you're able to change the name of any of the steps, not just the ones that have a, a bunch of items within it. The next improvement that I want to highlight is around segmentation. So currently you can compare up to three segments, all visits is counted as a segment, within the fallout analysis. Moving forward, however, you'll be able to bring in unlimited segments for comparison. It's really as, as many as can fit on the page and as many as you want to be able to view. So you can see here by adding in these segments, we've created a fallout for each one and stacked them so you can very easily compare side by side the you know, differences between how these different customer groups move through your website or your app. The last thing I wanted to highlight, and I'll back a couple of these out just to make it a cleaner view, is the ability to trend touchpoint percentages. So today, if you right click on any step, you can currently trend a touchpoint, which will take, for exa uh, example, this product page's 2,200 visitors, and it will trend that over time. Um, but this is really just a, a raw number of visitors trended over time. What's more interesting is taking this number and dividing by total visitors to your website to see what the, the conversion rate is for that, that group of visitors through that step. And that's what we've added in this upcoming release. If you right click trend touchpoint percentage, it will take that 2200 number and divide by the 17,000 all visits number and show you that percentage over time of visitors that make it to the product page step. We've even taken this a step further and giving you the option to trend all touch points. So rather than just looking at the conversion rate through to product pages, you'll be able to look at the conversion rate through to each page. So this will take each of these visitor numbers that you see here and divide by all visits. And it will plot it over time so you can understand the overall trend of the conversion rate to each step in your fallout process. So these are some of the, the bigger enhancements that are coming to Fallout in just a few days here. Um, we hope you guys enjoy using it. Uh, be sure to check out Fallout today if you haven't used it before and, and uh, check back again later this week for some of these new features that will be coming.